it's Dan here from DD Hammocks. Today we're going to be doing a complete beginner's guide to hammock camping, which is going to cover all of the basics on how to hammock camp. But first of all, why would you hammock camp? Let's find out. So why would you hammock camp? Now there are many reasons to hammock camp. First of all, it opens up the possibility of new camping grounds. They don't have to be level or dry, all you need are two places to sling your hammock between, usually a pair of trees, but you can improvise. Now hammock camping is also a very open experience which does leave you more in touch with nature and of course it's really comfy, a hammock doubles up as a chair as well as a bed. Now which hammock to choose? So DD offer a range of hammocks suited for different activities and environments around the world. Starting off with hammocks like the camping hammock here and its younger brother the scout hammock which is a simple hammock really designed for people just looking to get into the world of hammocking and those that don't require a bug net. So up next we have the frontline and travel hammocks. Now these two hammocks have an integrated mosquito net which means that you'll stay bug free all year round. They are identical however the travel hammock, the one on the ground here, has a waterproof base which allows you to use it as a bivvy on wet ground. Next we have the super light jungle hammock. Like the Frontline and Travel Hammock, the Superlight Jungle has a mosquito net. However, because it's a modular system, you can fully remove the mosquito net for when you don't need it or when you're trying to save weight. Now, it also has a fully removable waterproof base, so you can use it as a bivvy, just like the Travel Hammock. However, you can take the base off and place it over the hammock itself to keep you dry in a jungle environment. Lastly, we have the Superlight Modular System. It's a completely separate mosquito net and hammock which can be purchased separately. However, when combined, it does create the lighter setup in the world. This is ideal for hammockers where space and weight is at a premium. And the mosquito net can also be used with any of the other hammocks in Didi's line which don't have a mosquito net as standard. Next up, we need to discuss suspension options. DD offer two kinds of suspension with their hammocks, either webbing rope or the whoopee slings with the tree huggers. Now the Scout and the camping hammock as well as the Frontline and Travel all come with the webbing rope. However the super light range, that's the jungle and the super light hammock itself, they come with the whoopee slings and tree huggers as standard. So let's show you how these work. So with the webbing rope, what we do is we wrap either end around the tree and then we're going to secure it in place by tying a simple shoelace knot. We can always double up to make sure it stays secure. Now with the whoopee slings and tree huggers, the first thing we're going to do is wrap the tree huggers around the tree and then we'll either use a soft shackle or a carabiner to attach to the large adjustable loop of the whoopee sling itself. Once we've done this, we then will either pull the tail through the whoopee sling to make it tighter or we can pull it back through to the loop end to make it slacker. Run it down and it will stay tight. As you can see, webbing is a simple option, however the whoopee slings are a lighter and more adjustable option to consider. It's easy to see why many seasoned hammockers upgrade to them. You'll be pleased to know as well that any of DD's hammock line can be upgraded to whoopee slings at any time. Okay, so now we've looked at all the options for you to consider, let us set up a camping hammock, as this will give you a better understanding of the process of setting up a hammock. Now what I need to consider is where I'm going to place it first of all. So I've got two trees here that I'll set my hammock up on. Now they're both strong, healthy trees, they're all alive and their trunks are over an 8 inch diameter so I know that they're going to be able to support me safely and I'm not going to damage the trees. I also need to consider what's above me though, so always have a look above you to make sure there's nothing that's likely to fall on you while you're trying to sleep. And then one last thing to consider as well is the distance between the trees. So if I measure out one two, three, four paces, that will give me a good lay when I'm in my hammock. It's not going to be too far, it's not going to be too close. You always want to aim between four and six paces as an ideal distance apart. So let's set up the camping hammock. So because we have the camping hammock, all we need to do is tie a simple shoelace knot with a suspension on either tree. There we are. So 
sorted. So now we have the hammock up. We need to make sure that we get it roughly centered between our two trees so this will require a little bit of adjustment with your suspension and this is made easier if you do have whoopee slings. Now you also want to think about having about a 30 degree angle in your suspension as this will give you a flatter lay when you're in your hammock and we'll talk about that a little more later on. Now it is also worth having one side of your hammock slightly higher than your other like this side here this will be my foot end because if you have your hammock lying completely flat what tends to happen is you'll slide towards your foot end during the night and that makes things quite uncomfortable. So now we need to talk about how we get into our hammocks. So many people that are new to hammocking are often concerned that when they go to sit down in the hammock they're simply going to roll out the other side but this just isn't the case. First of all you want to make sure your hammock is hung at a level where it's comfortable for you to sit down in and that usually means having the suspension at about shoulder to head height around the tree. When we go to sit in the hammock what we're going to do is grab the material at the front here and bunch it up and shove it underneath our knees. We use our other hand to spread the hammock back and I will sit down roughly in the centre. From this point I'm now on the hammock, I can lean back and recline. If I want to lie down all I need to do is swing my body one way and my feet the other and I'm in. It's as easy as that. So now that we're in the hammock let's talk about how we're going to get the maximum level of comfort. Now you'll notice that my feet are over in one corner and my head and my shoulders are actually in the opposite corner in what we call the diagonal lay. This allows us to lay nice and flat and not only is it comfortable like this it also makes side sleeping not only possible but comfortable as well. Now this is only allowed to happen because of how we hang the hammocks. As long as we hang it with about a 30 degree hang in the suspension then we'll be absolutely fine. This is a lot slacker than some people actually think you need and this is definitely more comfortable than lying straight along the hammock as you end up in a banana shell. Next up we need to talk about how we're going to stay dry while we're in our hammocks and DD offers us a range of tarps to keep us covered. Starting off with the Tarp S which is a 1.5 by 2.8 metre tarp really aimed at Vivian all the way up to the big 4x4 group shelter there. Now we are mainly interested in the three in the middle here for hammocking. We have the 3x3 tarp which is the most popular choice because of its versatility. However it's also worth considering the tarp M which is a 3.5 meter by 2.4 meter tarp which gives us extra coverage over our suspension. The last one worth considering is this little one here. That's the super light tarp which is 3 meters by 2.9 meters. As you can see it's the smallest, it's also the lightest of the lot. It's a perfect accompaniment for the rest of the super light system. So let's show you how we'll set the tarps up. So to set up our tarp we're going to need some cordage to run a ridge line between our two suspension points and then we're going to need to know three knots. So I've got some brightly coloured cordage here to hopefully make this easier to explain. Let's take a look. So to secure the first side of your ridge line to the tree any knot will do really however many people like to aim for quick release knots things like a slippery half hitch or an event hitch now to tie an event hitch you have the working side of your ridge line this is your actual ridge line itself on this side by a thumb we take the loose side over our fingers wrap it round our fingers just the once and then we're going to go underneath the working side itself we create a loop we reach through the loop and grab the last bit of the loose end and just pull it tight. Once we've done that we just give the knot a little bit of dressing up, pull it together and that fixes it in place. We'll then keep hold of this and walk to the tree. To release this afterwards we take the tail, give it a pull and it comes off making for an easy pack down. So at the other side of our ridge line we'll wrap the ridge line itself around the tree and then you can see here I go over itself and then I'm going to pull it back the way it came. This is going to pull it really tight and I'll do that as many times as necessary with the cordage that I've got and then to finish off what I do is I take a little loop and a loose end of my cordage and I pass that around and back through itself and then I pull it back tight. This creates what we call a slippery half hitch and that leaves us with a nice taut ridge line and then again at the end I've got a tail here which I can pull and this releases the whole thing. 
Okay, so the last knot that we need to know how to tie is a prussic knot. We're going to tie two of these, one for either end of our tarp to pull it really nice and tight across our ridge line. Now, they're a great knot, as you can see, when I pull on this bit, which the tarp's going to be attached to, it locks itself in place by friction. However, if I grab the knot itself, I can easily slide it along. So let me show you how to tie these. What we will do is we'll take a piece of cord, we fold it in half, we create what we call a bite, and then we lay the bite over the ridge line. We pass the two tail ends through the bite, and we're going to do that a couple of times. And then once we've done that, we, we just need to dress up our prussic knot a little bit to make sure that the tails are always going from the inside to the outside. When we've done that, we've created our prussic knot. So we pull it nice and tight first, this neatens it up, and then, as you can see, it locks on itself, but I can still slide it along the cord. Okay, so the very last thing we need to do now is take our prussic knots and tie them with whatever knot you like to one of the attachment points along the edge of the tarp. Yeah, I'm just going to use like a half itch here. Pull that through and then pull it tight. Dead easy. And then we slide these along and it pulls our tarp nice and taut. In questionable weather, it is always worth pitching your tarp first just to make sure your gear stays dry. And as you can see, I've pitched the ridge line actually slightly above head height because this just gives me plenty of space while I'm inside. If the weather does really close in though, of course you can lower this down. Now, a lot of questions are always asked about whether to pitch your ridge line underneath or above your hammock. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. It's all down to personal preference. So, next up, we need to look at how we're going to stay warm while we're in our hammocks. So as well as staying dry, you also need to make sure you're going to be warm in your hammock so you get a comfortable night's sleep. Now there's many routes to go down with staying warm in a hammock. You can use a sleeping bag, you can use a wool blanket, or you can even use a hammock quilt to keep you warm from above. But you do need to remember you also need insulation below you in a hammock. And again, there's a few things you can use here. A lot of people will use a foam roll mat or an inflatable mat. They'll simply sleep on top of it in the hammock or many of Dee Dee's hammocks, all in fact except the Superlight, have two layers so you can slot the mat in between the layers of the hammock and it will stay in position. However, many seasoned hammockers prefer the comfort of an under blanket as opposed to a mat because this will conform to the shape of the hammock and it still will keep you warm from the cold underneath. So now we've covered the basics, you should be ready to head out there and explore the outdoors and find what works for you. For more information, please visit ddhammocks.com.